always excited to be with you in your homes. It's still the new year, I guess. If you haven't seen us yet, you're watching us for the first time in this year. Happy New Year to all of you. And of course, this is Woman 360. We are talking all things um, women, and of course, we're not leaving out the men. But I hope you've taken all that glory, all that cheerfulness into your implementation plans for 2020. We're also going to look at how you can take care of your nails and hair, the wigs. How do you get uh, to make sure that those are in the right shape at the right time, 101 with nails and your hair. And we have a very interesting story when it comes to sickle cell anemia. What comes to your mind when you think of that? I have two beautiful ladies, one who is sickle cell um, anemic and another who is a parent to two children with sickle cell. They have a beautiful story and the mother is also an author. She's written books. So we have very good stories that you have to stay tuned to. But before we get rolling, I went into the streets of Lusaka to just get comments on what people think of the topics that we have today. Listen to this. Sickle cell, all, all I know about sickle cell, it's a disease, but not really much about it. Watching Woman 360, we're having a lovely time in here, getting to know so much from each other, behind the scenes, on set. So get interactive with us as well as you get to ask questions and comments and give us your thoughts as well online. Remember, we are on Facebook as Woman 360. I'm now going to be talking to Mwanza and Nkonde because, I mean, they have a story that is in our communities. Sometimes what we ignore sometimes what we don't want to face, and sometimes what we run away from. Sickle cell anemia is one of those that I think almost everybody has come in contact with somebody, either a family, a friend, a, fam a family, a relative, a friend, who has got sickle cell anemia. There's so many myths around this, but having to be a woman who grows up with this, having to, a mother who, to be a mother who's bringing up children with sickle cell, how is that experience? And these women, I'm very glad, have come to share their story and to encourage us as well and to inspire somebody out there who can actually just do this. But there's, special, there's a special twist to this. Mwanza has actually written four books. Not one, right? Not one. Four books yeah. uh, in relation to sickle cell anemia. Thank you so much for coming to Woman360. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Um, so when we talk about sickle cell anemia, you are experiencing this in different capacities. I'll start with you, Mwanza. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have two kids. Mm -hmm. And congratulations, one of them went and had a bone marrow, marrow transplant. transplant. Yes. That's not easy. No. Tell me about that. Uh, about the bone marrow transplant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my son uh, underwent a bone marrow transplant last year. He's now post uh, 370 something days. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's doing very well. He had his bone marrow transplant done in India. So he's off, he's cured from sickle cell anemia. And uh, we are looking forward to a new life. Ah, all yeah. right. But I mean, um, uh, tell me your first your, your, your feelings, your emotions when you first found out that one of them has got sickle cell anemia, another one has got sickle cell anemia. Actually, for me, uh, for us as a family, we found out all in the same year for mm. both of them. Uh, I'm a mother of four. My, uh, my firstborn doesn't have sickle cell. Mm -hmm. My second and third are the ones that were born with sickle cell anemia. And... Um, the our first our second born who's a boy um started getting sick from the age of nine months and um, we went through a lot of hospitalization he had about three blood transfusions and there was just a lot of hospital work and home and uh, a lot of times you are off work you are feeling guilty sometimes i would have to go with my son to work so that my boss can just see that for real my son is not okay and uh, a lot of such but um, the hospitals couldn't diagnose they couldn't tell us what was wrong with uh, my son they would give us a lot of uh, reasons why he was showing those symptoms mm -hmm. a lot of times we were told it could have been malaria that wasn't picked 
And um, we went on like that until my daughter came. My daughter and my son are really close in age. They're one year, five months difference. Mm -hmm. So when my daughter came, my daughter was very healthy, very big, and very happy baby. But uh, two weeks before she turned three years old, she also became ill. And when we took her to the hospital, unfortunately, her crisis was in the stomach. So um, they rushed her to theater. They thought that her intestine was twisted. So they rushed her in theater. It was an, uh, an emergency. And uh, she was in theater for about three hours. She came out of theater, and I was told there was nothing that they found. So at that time, I was crying, and I was so confused. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was wrong with my daughter. And then the surgeon, uh, OK, they suspected other things. And then a month later, she got well. A month later, she had the same kind of crisis or pain. And I took her back to the same hospital. So the doctor there said, let me call the surgeon mm. because uh, we may take her back to theater. So uh, the surgeon came, and the surgeon is the one who said, no, we are not taking her back to theater. We are testing her for sickle cell anemia. At that time, I didn't know much about sickle cell. All I knew was sickle cell was a death trap. My daughter is dying, you know. And uh, the doctor tells me we are testing her for sickle cell. I looked at the doctor, and I was so upset with him. I said, how could he even think that my child could be a sickle cell anemia, you know? And then my husband knew a lot about sickle cell because mm. of his family members. Some of them had uh, children with sickle cell. So he said, no, go ahead and let's hear the results. So my daughter was uh, tested. And then um, a, a week later, the results came. And she was found to be positive with, with sickle, sickle cell anemia. I was so devastated. I was very hurt. I started looking at my daughter. At that time, I had three children. Mm -hmm. She was the only go girl. And I'm asking God, is my daughter now dying? Because how know? can she be only at three years old? Yes, she was and only three years old at that time. Nkonde, uh, growing up with sickle cell anemia, I mean, the, um, I remember uh, back then, there was somebody we grew up with. And there would be times where you hear <laughs> Uh, people saying she's got sickle cell anemia. Katushi uh, ngakapita pa 16 years old. Ngapita pa 16 years old, then she can uh, have a full life. Issues that people talk about in regards to um, it's like that stages. 16. If not 16, then 35. If not 35, how was it growing up with sickle cell anemia? And tell us how you found out. Okay, my parents tell me that they discovered I had sickle cell anemia when I was eight months because one day they woke up and my arm was swollen so they didn't know what to do luckily my father was a miner so the mine hospitals then were doing well they took me there then they did the test and said no she has got sickle cell mm -hmm. we are seven i'm the only one with sickle cell we have two carriers in the family though but you know like you said growing up my father would be told my father and my mother would be told she's not going to pass 11 mm -hmm. she's going to die after 11 they move they go to 18 they go and unfortunately at th those years that they mention are quite critical because at that point between 6 and 11 i got very sick i would be in and out of the hospital and very small sickly you know, some of the some of the tests at school I would write them from the hospital. I was about to ask that. Yeah. You know, there's school, then there's now work. How, how do you um, I have to tell people that it's going to be constant? Sometimes I'm going to be in hospital, sometimes I'll be out, sometimes I'll just need a day off. Mm -hmm. How easy has that been? Um, I learned from way back to be truthful about my condition. My father told me you need to make people know and understand what you go through so that they're able to understand you. And I've been blessed mm -hmm. that in every places i've gone to be it school work i have support mm -hmm. i have a very good boss i'm a teacher by profession and ah, i work nice. with three-year-olds oh, okay. and that's like you need a lot of energy for that which initially <laughs> i don't have and you know i'm not supposed to be found seated i'm supposed to be on my, on my <laughs> yes but i told her i have this problem 
and sometimes you find me sitting, but my work will still go on, and it still does. Ah. Yes, it does. Okay. We're going to ask a, 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 another question in terms of support and people around you, yeah. how your parents used to tell you that you need to tell everybody who <laughs> you come in contact with, you go sickle cell. Boyfriend, husband, <laughs> partner, anything, <laughs> anybody, anyone? Unfortunately, no. But there's been, obviously, there's someone been in the there's picture. Yeah, of course, so, of course. Uh, having to talk about such with somebody that, that is close to you, for coming from a woman, yeah. uh, how easy has it been? Not really easy, but um, you know, you tell people when you meet them, you need to find the right time to do it. Others run away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there have been guys who are like, no. So is it sexually transmitted? Oh. And, and you have to start tutoring. You, you need no, to start you explaining. can't get no. it through sex. It's this is sickle cell anemia. It's not AIDS, You please. inherit it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, others will go like, so can you have children? You explain, no, you know, because of this blood problem, maybe you might have one or two. But we've seen our friends have gotten children, and they are OK. So they go like, ah, I want to have a lot of children, so I uh, I think I can't be with you. Bye-bye. Ah, and the family pressures and society, that's exactly. another story for another yes, day. Yes. Mwanza, you mm. even went on to write the books. Yeah. Tell me about that process. OK, so um, when I, OK, I, I, I normally write. I like writing stories. Uh, from childhood, I would write stuff, and I would throw it away and things like that. So when I was in India with my son, I was in India for five months. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I started thinking, I said, um, you know, there's a lot of sickle cell back home. We are affected by this uh, condition, and people don't really, really know it. They don't really uh, know how it comes and where, which child, what kind of a child can have it and mm -hmm. things like that. So I started thinking of writing um, uh, stories about sickle cell. These stories are stories that tell a picture of a person living with sickle cell anemia, mm -hmm. like in Conde. She tells her story of how growing up was, how hospitalization has been, how she mingles with people in the society, and what she hears people talk behind her back. So I started writing such stories. So my stories are really fiction but they are real stories based on real so stories. So it's fiction, but with a message, with a that's, message. A re that's realistic. Yes. Ah, OK. Tell yes. us about them, the titles. We just go through um, the titles. This one is my first book. Um, it was launched on mm -hmm. 22nd of December. It's about a young man called Chembe. It's all fiction. Mm -hmm. Chembe is a Zambian uh, uh, boy who's now, he's now a, a man. He's now about 35 years old. He's got a family. And he's married, he's got two children, but he's telling us how coming, growing up from the age of 15, from the shanty compounds of Lusaka, how difficult it was being raised by a mother who was a maid. So I was thinking about a maid because usually we don't want our maid to be sick. Mm -hmm. We want our maid to be fit. We want our maid to be in the house. We don't want the maid to say, no, I'm not feeling well. I'm at the hospital today. So I came up with a story of a maid with a child called in Ch uh, Chembe, who's got sickle cell, and how the mother was in and out of work until finally she got a, a job from a doctor who was very sympathetic, and that doctor looked after Chembe, and Chembe has grown. He's found his love. The first time a woman ran away from him in university because the woman says, no, I can't deal with a man who's always sick. And then eventually he finds his love, he's married, and he's got children. Ah, it's a beautiful one. Yeah, ah, it's a must read. I think I'm going to read it. It is a must read. <laughs> it's a must read. Yeah. But when you look at both of you have lived with sickle cell, mm -hmm. even though it's in different capacities, and you, you've, go, you've grown up in Zambia, you hear the myths. What are some of those myths that you can bust? Maybe one from you, one from her. I don't okay. know, how many do we have, you know? We, what some of those misconceptions that people have mm -hmm. that are really not true? Actually, the biggest one that we have in Zambia is about witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Because sickle cell is all to do with blood. They are always anemic. Their HB is never 12. It's always lower than 10, mostly. Um, so a lot of people think, no, it's a witch. It's a witch who's trying to do this. It's my nah, mother-in-law. <laughs> uh -huh, it's my mother-in-law. <laughs> it's this man and ABC. So actually, what my last book, which is coming out in December this year, because okay. the second one is coming out in April, then nice. August, then December. 
my last book is talking about uh, the village setup. Mm. Yeah. So you've tackled the urban area, the village setup, yeah. almost every, every uh, situation you can think of, yes. isn't it? Yeah, ah. kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any myths you can bust? Yes, please. Where they will tell you you will never grow. Tabakula. Look at her. She's there, there living every day. I'm 41. Well, yeah. Hey. yeah. Wow. So right now I'm working with people like Mwanza. I want to encourage mothers who have given birth to children with sickle cell because they feel like they've come to the end of their lives. You know, they look at these children like they'll, not, they'll never grow up. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage parents and tell them, we still have a life and we can live a normal life and you can do anything that you want. You can be whoever you but want. But when there are times that you were saying, ah, after all, Kai, if I'm going to reach 18, let me just do this. I won't, I don't know if I'll get to 20, let me just go and do something reckless. Yes. Well, did you, you know, have such actually, a period in your life? Definitely. Yeah. I took long to buy myself a vehicle. Uh -huh. I took long to start building because I'm telling myself, even if I build, after all, I'm going to die. So what changed your <laughs> What changed your mind? What changed your mind? I was not dying. You know, I went <laughs> up. I'm like 25. <laughs> I go up to one. I'm, I'm like, no, so I can live. And you know, my brother-in-law, he's late. Mm -hmm. He looked at me and told me, you know what? When God decides that you go, you will go. So and people who are fit die mm -hmm. still. So you need to just live a normal life and yeah, you are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you get from uh, the benefit of you were talking about working with Mwanza and mm. brought to my mind the issue of, uh, you know, uh, being in groups or support teams or just associations that talk about sickle cell. Apart from obviously yes, the support, yeah. but what is the relevance of such teams, such groups? I think the importance is, uh, you know, when you're going through um, raising a child, for me, raising a child with such a condition, you know, um, it's very hard and you really feel lonely. You really feel alone. Um, sometimes parents actually close up when they when they find out that their child has got this condition. Mm -hmm. They just close up and they don't want to talk about it. They want to hide their child. And because, you know, people living with sickle cell anemia, they, you can most of them you can tell by the way they look their eyes could be yellow like mm. really yellow their bodies would be like yeah. smallish they wouldn't be as tall most of them especially what growing do you tell up. what do you tell your kids so. because it's very hard you know sometimes uh children can really be cruel to each yeah. other when they're playing yes. how do you encourage your kids to uh, as a mother who knows uh when he or she goes to the playground yeah. they might talk about uh, why are you looking Something, like this? Yeah. How come you're always sick? How yes. do you encourage them? Uh, for my children, we started telling them about their condition when they were very little. Um, my son is on the quiet side. He knows so much about the condition, but he wouldn't really talk about it. For my daughter, my daughter is really outspoken. Trust the girl to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so my daughter really knows about the condition, and you know she's shorter than most of her age group. So sometimes she uh, initially she would say, "Mommy, I, w I wish I was taller. Why am I so sh why am I short? You know." And then you tell her because of sickle cell, because of your condition. Uh, if anything, you are not so short. You are just okay. So she talks about it freely. She tells her friends when she goes uh, to school, like a new school. She'll tell her friends. She'll tell them, "Do you know what? Do you know what? I've got sickle cell anemia, and do you know what it is? It's A B C D." So she comes home There's and she'll a tell ambassador. you. Yeah. <laughs> so she comes home and she'll even tell you. Somebody was asking me that. Can you get sickle cell by drinking water from the same bottle or whatever? <laughs> and then I would ask her. So what did you say? And then she would say, No, I told her this. And I would say, Oh, good girl, you're doing well. No, I appreciate <laughs> yeah. you ladies coming through and sharing our stories with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. And good luck with the book. Thank you. So I'm much. one who loves books, so yeah. I'll probably get all four. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, appreciate you coming through. We're going to get into issues of um, care for your wigs and nails as well. I'm going to get to that table with the ladies. I'm going to join them because <laughs> I don't want to be too far from them. <laughs> Who knows what I can get? You be with us. Hello, ladies. How are you? Hi. Thank you so Baby much for coming to Women360. So but what's the importance of enhancing your nails? Um, okay. You can uh, get started while we're chatting. Okay. Okay. So you know how uh, the nails break. They mm -hmm. have... Um, they're damaged and whatnot. So when you're putting your artificial nails or acrylic nails, it 
uh, helps prevent you from biting the nails, the break-in, and whatnot. Ah. Yes. So it's very, and then, you know, just to be confident as a woman, you know, we want to be beautiful, we want mm -hmm. our hands to be seen, especially you who's on TV, <laughs> you obviously want to. Look who's be. talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do first is mm -hmm. I always have to sanitize mm -hmm. both me and my client's hands. Okay. Yes, so I'm going to sanitize our hands. Okay, so sanitizing the hands. Okay. So this is very important, very, very important. You mm. always have to make sure you and your client's hands are clean. Okay. Yes. So once we are done with the sanitizing, we can go to our file and just prep the nail before we go to put in the nail, the, the tip okay. on it. Yes. So what nail care tip do you have for our viewers watching out there? Um, the nail care tip that I have is, um, you can try to soak, especially if you have weak nails, mm -hmm. you can try to soak your hands, your fingernails, and in just soak it in salty water, warm salty water. Ah. Yes, that helps with the nails. And you can also get calcium, calcium for the nails. If you don't want to put anything on your nails, if you don't want to paint them, mm -hmm. if you don't want to uh, put stickers, acrylics, your natural nails require extra uh, uh, attention compared to your artificial nails. Mm. You need to pay very, very extra attention to, okay, that's better. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to leave the ladies doing this yes. while I'll introduce our male crush for today. Do your <laughs> thing, we'll come and see you okay, when you're okay, finishing okay. with that one. <laughs> And of course, we still have Lulu and Lenny. We have not forgotten about you, ladies. How's it going? Okay. Um, we're done. We're, we're done. Okay. Yes. Ah, can our camera <laughs> pick that? Can our camera yes, pick that? Please. I think she can use her other hand for before and after. <laughs> <laughs> the it before looks and the after. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That looks so beautiful. Yes. So she chose the color herself. Yes. Ah, she it, did. It, it comes out. It comes out very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming through as well, for okay. giving us, you know, tips on how to take care of our nails, mm -hmm. whether it's your own nails or artificial nails. Appreciate. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Once okay. More. <laughs> on behalf of the entire production crew, as well as my guests, a big thank you as well to our Mel Crash for today, Peterson Zagaze. Until mm -hmm. next time. <laughs>